Hello students, the topic for today's presentation is types of lenses used in photography. I hope you enjoyed the previous video uh, lecture for aperture, exposure and depth of field of a camera, how it is used in DSLR camera and how the different combinations will give you to take a perfectly or properly exposed picture. So today we will see what are the different types of lenses and how it works and how the lenses are classified in terms of the technical jargons like wide angle, telephoto, super prime, normal lens. I hope I am repeating now the lens work on the principle of refraction. I hope you know the two concepts of uh, reflection and principle of refraction. Here the lenses which we use works on the principle of refraction which means bending of light as it passes from one medium to the other. When a light passes through this medium, the medium here means the lens which makes you to bend the light. So that concept, that principle is known as refraction. The lens work on the principle of refraction which means bending, a bending of light as it passes from one medium to the other and a lens is an optical device which transmits and refracts light. That means converging or diverging the beam that we will see in the later slides. So converging or diverging the beam, here beam is the light beam. A simple lens consists of a single optical element. So it is an optical device which transmits and refracts light which gives you the result of convergence and divergence, converging or diverging the light beam. That is a single lens consists of a single optical element. A compound lens here is an array of simple lenses, individual lenses that is the individual lens elements with a common axis. A compound lens is combination of a various simple lenses having a common axis. So the use of multiple elements allows more optical aberrations to be corrected than is possible with a single element. For example, if you take a single element that is a single lens, if a, le a light beam passes, for example, passes through the medium, it gets refracted and we will get a image other side of the lens. But when they are coming to the compound lens, it is a combination of various lenses that is simple lenses to fix it with a common axis. So the use of multiple elements is, uh, the purpose is to allow more optical aberrations that is to be corrected than with the single element. So to get what I said before, no, to get a properly focused, perfectly exposed picture. Okay. So to be corrected than which is not possible with a single element to avoid this optical thing. So okay, a compound lens is an array of simple lenses with a common axis. Lenses are typically made of glass or transparent plastic. So these are the uh, characteristics of lens which we are which we are going to use it for photography. I am summarizing lens work on the principle of refraction and lens is an optical device which transmits and refracts light converging or diverging the beam. A simple lens consists of a single optical element. A compound lens is an array of simple lens with a common axis. Lenses are typically made of glass or transparent plastic. So the different types of lenses as I said now the compound lens is a combination of various lenses. So the most commonly used lenses are biconvex and biconcave. So you can see from the picture 
the different types of single lenses biconvex the both the sides are convex so it's a bidual convex lens a plano convex one side is bulged the other side is a plane so that's a plano convex here convex concave so the other side one side is there like a cave the other side is a convex convex concave meniscus lens the uh, one side is plane and the other side is like a cave then it's a plano concave lens if you see this lens the two sides are like caves okay so this is a bi concave lens okay these are the different types of lenses but when it's coming to photography the most commonly used lenses are the first one the bi convex lens and bi concave lens now let we see the principles and characteristics of this bi convex and bi concave lens so if you see the bi convex lens this lens has a characteristics of converging in nature so these lenses are converging in nature see the light rays refracts inwards after passing through the lens see focal point which is the principal axis where the subject or object is in focus the distance between the lens and the principal axis is the focal length if a light rays after passing through this biconvex lens refracts inwards to get a to get a common axis picture so such lenses create real images so the image formed is said to be real because the rays of light from the object pass through the film and are inverted upside down so that we will see in the uh, with the how the lens uh, passes the image as an upside down see i hope you remember uh, this was discussed in the last class with the biconcave convex lens the subject is here which is the object space and the image space where it gets refracted and usually in the lens we will get an uh, upside down picture in the image plane that is going to be recorded on the light sensitive medium light sensitive element this what you call it as the sensor okay i hope you remember if we explain this picture for an ex for example for a, the depth of field which is the the principal axis here which is the middle image is clear and even before or away from the middle image it looks blurry which is out of in simple terms you got to say it's an out of focus so the biconvex lens these lenses are converging in nature the light rays refracts inwards after passing through the lens so such lenses creates real images as i said in the upside down uh, after passing through the lens the film looks like upside down which is recorded in the light sensitive medium so the use of con convex lens where these lenses are used number 1 cameras a camera consists of three main parts you know the body which is light tight and contains all the mechanical parts inside and the lens which is a converging lens which is the convex lens the film or charge coupled device in case of a digital camera as i say you know the light sensitive medium the charge coupled device which causes the image and number 2 these convex lenses are used in magnifying glasses my microscopes telescopes and best example is human eyes or human eyes are come to be the convex lens spectacles they use and rear view mirrors in the vehicle so these are the areas this convex lens used and which we are going to use it for our camera also now let we see the characteristics of a bi concave lens you can see the lens has the two side like a caves it's like a bi concave lens and how the image concave lenses these lenses are thinner at the middle the rays of light that passes through the lens are spread out they diverge a concave lens is a diverging lens a convex lens is a converging lens the image formed is virtual and diminished it becomes it becomes smaller and it gets diminished if you use the bi concave lens now we will see where these concave lenses are used the use of concave lens are used in 
flash, lights, lasers. So it will it will go up to certain limit, certain area, and it will get diminished. Like in peepholes, peephole windows, uh, peephole doors, reflectors, and street lights, where where it should reach some extent and it will get diminished. So the concave lenses are used in this area. So as I said, for camera we use by convex lens is having the characteristics of converging in nature. Now coming to the main picture types of lens in photography, how these different types of lens are classified. So primary at a primary level the lenses are classified as three zoom lenses, single focal length lenses and special purpose lenses. Zoom single focal length and special purpose lens. Under the zoom, we can classify into three wide angle zoom, normal zoom and telephoto zoom. Single focal length, wide angle, normal and zoom. For special purpose, under special purpose, again three categories. Special purpose, these lenses are used for special purpose photography. Micro lens, fisheye lens and perspective control lens. Okay. Are it clear if you take any type of lens, if you see any lens which is attached to the camera which falls under this category mostly initially mostly with the first two that is zoom and single focal length only the special purpose camera as a uh, photography use the special purpose lenses. Then coming to zoom to get to get more into detail as I said no mostly the lenses that we use are zoom and single focal length lens which is wide angle zoom, normal zoom and telephoto zoom, wide angle normal and zoom. To put it very simple, single focal length is a fixed focal length lens where we do not have an option to zoom in or zoom out. The focal length that is in that such a way it is uh, what you say um, assembled in a single focal length we cannot change it. Okay, it is a single focal length and under zoom where we can adjust the focal length. Okay, zoom in and zoom out is possible in under zoom lenses under the wide angle zoom and telephoto. I hope you remember in the previous presentation I shown an example with a degree with starting from 20, 30 mm lens to 600 mm lens the degree of view it varies. The same is applicable to wide angle and telephoto. Wide angle has a more degree of view to capture and telephoto is the narrow. The wide angle is the broader perspective, telephoto is the narrower as like some 300 mm lens covers up to 12 degree. I hope you remember uh, with these numbers. Okay. To make it clear, zoom lens which is having a varying focal length, zoom in and zoom out and fixed focal length that is a single focal length lens, again degree of view variation wide angle to telephoto. And now let us see the different types of lenses and its ranges, how they are classifying. Okay, As I said, no, wide angle is the one end and the other end is telephoto in the previous slide, wide angle and the other end is telephoto. So now we will see the range, different ranges and comes under which type of lenses and used for what type of photography. If your lens is having a focal length lesser than 20 millimeter, then it is considered to be a extreme wide angle lens it is used for architecture photography where it should cover the whole building so just uh, to get a clear environment on the whole okay then the second category if your lens focal length is between 21 millimeter to 35 millimeter then it is going to be the wide angle lens where we can use it for landscape photographs so if you are using it for a landscape photography Definitely, what's your choice? What should be your choice? Your choice should be wide angle lens to 
tell more technically it should have a length focal length of less than 35 millimeter that is in between 20 millimeter to 35 millimeter where it is a wide angle lens where we can go for a landscape photography okay then coming to 35 millimeter to 70 millimeter is known as the normal lens 35 millimeter to 70 millimeter gives you the perspective view of a normal view that's why it's a normal photography or normal lens type which is used for a documentary or normal street photography then if the focal length ranges between 80 millimeter to 135 millimeter then it's medium telephoto lens which is used for portrait taking portrait picture and the next focal length range between 135 millimeter to 300 millimeter then the lens type is termed to be the telephoto lens which is used in sports and wildlife photography sports photography and wildlife photography they go for telephoto lenses which ranges between 135 to 300 millimeter if it is greater than 300 millimeter then it is called as super telephoto lens which is used in wildlife photography okay now you should be very clear if you know the focal length we can tell the lens type and we can decide which type of photograph to take or you tell what type of photograph you want to take if you are going for a picnic you want to cover the landscape then what would be your choice you should go for no, what you say wide angle first it's wide angle normal and extreme wide angle or if you're taking a passport size photograph or portrait pictures are covering any event to take only the portrait picture then medium telephoto lens is enough with the name of the lens you can tell about the focal length of the range of a lens or if you know the range of the uh, that means focal length range of a lens you can tell the type of the lens and for which type of photography it could be it can be used so as i said the two things extreme wide angle to super telephoto extreme wide angle wide angle normal medium telephoto telephoto and super telephoto that is 20 millimeter to 300 millimeter so different types of photography it varies now we'll see each and every lens and its features extreme wide lenses provide a dynamic perspective as I said no less than 20 millimeter which gives a dynamic perspective of the world around us well beyond the scale of eyesight you see our normal vision comfortably takes in a 45 to 50 degree angle of view which is corresponding to the as we said now the normal lens is a 50 millimeter lens in 35 millimeter film photography it's a normal eyesight is about 45 to 50 degree angle of view this extreme wide lenses it gives a dynamic perspective which goes beyond the scale of eyesight the extreme wide perspective begins with a 90 degree field of view which emerges through the lens of 21 millimeter as I mentioned no, 20 millimeter just having a shorter focal length and 50 millimeter of shorter focal length in most digital cameras which we term to be the extreme wide angle lens. So yet extreme wide angle photography is available for everyday picture taking expands visual horizons and you can even wrap the spaces so okay you, you can watch certain films they used to have this extreme wide angle shot when and then and there if it is required they will go for this extreme wide shot which gives you the beyond the scale of eyesight covering the world which gives the dynamic perspective of the world around us leisure that is shorter focal length which is the extreme wide angle lens then coming to wide angle lens again it's like uh, it's not less than 50, 13 14 millimeter the focal length ranges between 14 millimeter to 24 millimeter a wide angle lens is a lens with a short focal length that takes in a wide view 
These lenses are typically used when the subject is in the extreme foreground and the photographer wants the background in focus as well. So keep it in mind where the foreground and background should get focused then you should go for this wide angle lenses. So the wide angle lenses are used when the subject is in the foreground that is extreme foreground. For example, if you are going for a news collection or news collecting, if you are taking the news bites or if you are taking a picture in front of the that exact spot, then you should cover the location also where the uh, reporter does not get a chance to stand closer to the environment or closer to the spot where she will be standing away from the background which is required. So extreme foreground and the photographer wants the background also in focus then your choice should be wide angle lens. Okay. Then we will see what are the disadvantages of wide angle lens also. Since the perspective or view is a wider which gives a dynamic perspective lens flare which is a sun spot or light from some other source that hints, hits the lens and scatters forming the bright streaks random polygonal shapes okay chances are there if you are wider if your view is open wider chances of the other sources of lights hitting the lens are more okay which we call it as a the sun spot wide angle lenses are more prone to picking up these stray beams of light than regular lenses. So this is the reason the flares can be distracting within the images. The field of view is more the chances of rays hitting the lenses will be more. So flares can be distracting within the image which is called the image distraction. A wide angle lens has a tendency to distort cylindrical objects at the edge of the lenses curving the straight lens. If you see the picture uh, that is been taken in a wide angle lens, if you see the edges which will uh, which will curve that straight lens which is called as the distort the cylindrical objects at the edges of the lens which curving the straight lens. The wider the angle the more distortion. For example, a fisheye lens which is comes under the special purpose. A fisheye lens is an extreme example of this distraction. Straight lines or objects such as buildings appear to curve upward at the edges. So these objects are actually bent by the optics of the lenses. You clearly watch the, if you go more wider and wider this distraction will be more and there is one more disadvantage is vignetting. Some wide angle lenses may produce a vignetted effect where the image tends to become gradually darker towards the outer edges because of the dynamic perspective view the light the aperture would not be possible to reaching the center of the image. So that is the reason the that is the reason the image tends to become gradually darker towards the outer edges. This is due to more light reaching the center of the image than the outer edge of the frame. So obviously the more now more of light reaches the center and the outer edge gets the less light gives you the darker uh, towards the outer edges results in vignetted effect. So these three are the term to be the disadvantages of using wide angle lens, lens flat, image distortion and vignetting effect. Then from extreme we have seen extreme wide angle and wide angle lenses which are having a uh, shorter focal length and dynamic view there is broader view now moving towards the normal lens and its characteristics as I said normal lens is natural in photography a normal lens is a lens that reproduces a field of view that generally looks natural to a human observer under normal viewing conditions as compared with lenses with longer or shorter focal lengths which produce an expanded or contracted field of view that distorts the perspective when you view from a normal viewing distance. We see the normal lens it is 50 millimeter it is a non variable lens here as I said no two types of lenses classification zoom lens and single focal length here it is a single focal length lens 
50 millimeter under that single focal length uh, the listed were wide angle normal and uh, telephoto no zoom no under that it comes under the second category which is a normal single focal length which is the that is the reason it is 50 millimeter non variable. So, for still photography a lens with the focal length about equal to the diagonal size of the film sensor no is considered to be a normal lens which is mostly the 50 millimeter its angle of view is similar to the angle typically viewing the distance equal to print the diagonal this angle of view is about 53 degree diagonally the size of the film or sensor so it's a normal view normal lens which is about 50 millimeter okay comes under a single focal length and some used to name this as prime lens where the uh, focal length cannot be adjusted or control zoom in and zoom out is not possible at the prime lens which is the natural normal lens. So, the advantages of normal lens are a lens of normal focal length has several advantages over a lens that is substantially longer or shorter longer or shorter it has a several advantages a normal lens suits the requirement of most photographic situations it is ideal for the subjects that interest the majority of photographers you will realize and you will feel when you if you really use the photography and coming to practice you will understand the advantages of this normal lens it is usually far faster than lenses of other focal lengths that faster means that capturing that processing is more faster and allowing for easier framing and focusing when compared to the other longer or shorter focal length lenses higher shutter speed is possible to stop more action and full exposure under dimming lighting conditions is also possible in the normal lens for example if there is a situation where the light is very low it's the dim but if you want still want to get a full exposed picture instead of using a wide angle if you go for a normal lens this supports more to get a clear focused and picture here you can use it to for what you say freezing these to stop more action to take a freeze picture freezing the picture higher with, with because it supports for higher such a speed more so it that is uh, that is how this uh, said as it is usually faster than the lenses of other focal lengths for easier framing and focusing higher such a speed to stop more action and full exposure under even dimmer lighting conditions also it is generally sharper and better corrected it is generally sharper and better corrected than telephoto wide angle zoom lens although the difference is usually quite small even with the extra speed and clarity of the normal lens is smaller and lighter than any telephoto zoom lens and most wide angle lenses the normal view so these are all the several possibilities uh, advantages for a normal lens okay which is uh, these normal lenses are able to focus much closer than those of other focal length we having a closer subject okay if you are uh, going closer towards the subject this helps you to give the more uh, focus much closer than the other focal length lenses wide angle lenses have this ability to their depth of field makes precise focusing more difficult than with normal lens okay so these are all the several advantages of normal lens so extreme wide angle wide angle normal then moving to telephoto a telephoto lens is a camera lens designed to enable people to take long focal length see it's a 300 millimeter single focal it's a fixed focal length of 300 millimeter which is not varying that's it doesn't comes under the zoom lenses okay pictures using a lens with an actual length which is shorter than the focal length long focal length pictures is possible with this telephoto lenses in photography a telephoto lens is a specific type of long focus lens which the physical length of the lens is shorter than the focal length this is achieved by a special lens group known as a telephoto group because you, you can see uh, in wildlife photographies are uh, sports photographies these telephoto lenses are used telephoto lenses are sometimes broken into further subtypes medium telephoto and 
super telephoto based on the ranges. So, lenses covering between uh, 30 degree and 10 degree of view which is having a focal length range of 85 millimeter to 135 millimeter in 35 millimeter format is termed to be the medium telephoto lens. Super telephoto lens, the lenses covering between 8 degree through lens than 1 degree field of view that is over 300 millimeter in 35 millimeter film format. So, okay. So, see this telephoto lens is enable uh, us to take a long focal length pictures narrowing the field of view. You remember the wide angle lens which gives the dynamic perspective view here this narrowed view and under the telephoto lens medium telephoto and super telephoto up to 135 millimeter and over 300 millimeters the super telephoto lens and here comes the disadvantages of telephoto lenses the depth of field telephoto lenses have such focal lengths no often 200 millimeter or longer the depth of field you can achieve with them is drastically lower than with a standard or wide angle lens so you can't achieve the depth of field as much how we achieve with the wide angle or normal field telephoto lens depth of field is not possible much possible with this telephoto lenses and the perspective a telephoto lens has much a narrower perspective than both the human eye and other lenses. This narrow perspective drastically limits the amount of a scene or subject you can include in your picture. As I said, it's a name itself, it's a wire to get a narrow picture. So, it, you have to limit yourself to cover the other elements or other subjects in the to include in the picture. And portability is one of the disadvantage of this telephoto lens. Telephoto lenses are more cumbersome than standard. Telephoto lenses are more cumbersome than standard or wide angle lenses. Carrying them can be difficult while traveling or attending any crowded event. So, the super telephoto lenses can weight up to 10 to 12 pounds, that is 5 to 6 kgs, and it is more expensive. And also, it is expensive. Telephoto lenses are often much more expensive than other standard lenses, giving you one final reason not to buy is want to do sports or nature or wildlife photography so you can go to telephoto lens it is again the application of the telephoto lens I think extreme wide angle wide angle normal and telephoto lens it comes under the both zoom and single focal length lens and the third category is the special lens we have seen the special lens now macro lens Macro lenses are lenses with a macro mode used for close up photography of insects or flowers or any close up uh, activities of anything. They have similar properties of normal lens, but they are able to focus a lot closer to the subject. The camera lenses with the longer focal lengths come in very handy for taking close ups of subjects that might otherwise be scared away. The optical quality of a macro lens is normally very high. That is the reason instead of using normal lens, you want to take the close-up picture of any insects or any detail of any flowers or any detail of any subject and go for macro lens so because the optical quality of macro lens is normally very high. Now the categories. The zoom lenses, as I said, you know, three categories. Zoom lenses, single focal length lenses and Special lenses, under zoom lenses, wide angle zoom, normal zoom, telephoto zoom. Wide angle zoom, the range is between 14 millimeter to 25 millimeter and the normal zoom 25 millimeter to 70 millimeter and the telephoto zoom 70 millimeter to 200 millimeter, maybe the super telephoto is above 300 millimeter. Zoom lenses provide variable focal length of specific ranges. So, if you take any camera lens, you just see as I said in the previous video for to know the f-stop value of any camera lens just see the f uh, just see the camera lens where it is printed between 2 to some 5.6 it shows the f-stop coverage or f-stop range of the particular lens even the zoom range also specific range also is mentioned in your camera lens focal length okay just you can see uh, it is printed on the camera lens 14 mm if it is printed between the 24 to 70 millimeter then 
you can put that lens under the category of normal zoom lens. Okay, it allows the user to adjust its focal length on the lens without having to move its position. You do not want to move the position of the camera, it is the same position you can adjust your focal length. It is further broken down into three subcategories as you know wide angle zoom, normal zoom and telephoto zoom. As the name suggests the function of each types of lenses are described. So, above are the some of the examples of range of focal length in each type wide angle, normal telephoto, wide angle zoom. So, all these three lenses comes under the zoom lenses category. Zoom lenses provides variable focal length of specific ranges 24 millimeter to 70 millimeter, 70 millimeter to 200 millimeter which allows the user to adjust the focal length on the lens without to having to move its position. Then single focal length lenses and the same wide angle normal and telephoto the previous one wide angle zoom normal zoom and telephoto zoom here single focal length lenses wide angle normal and telephoto where the focal length is not in the specific range which is fixed. For example, the first picture 24 millimeter is a wide angle single focal length lens. The second one is a 50 millimeter which is called, which we discussed uh, uh, just uh, some time before 50 millimeter is a normal single focal length lens and 300 millimeter non variable lens comes under the telephoto. The picture shown is a single focal length lens. The functions of single focal length lenses are similar to that of zoom lenses. The difference is that the focal length are non variable which means user will have to move its position in order to frame the subject accordingly. Again it is also further broke down into three subcategories just like shown in the picture wide angle fixed frame, normal fixed frame and telephoto fixed focal length sorry not, not fixed frame it is fixed focal length 24 millimeter 50 millimeter. So, so above shows some of the examples of the range of focal length. If it is fixed, it is a single focal length lens and if you know the value, then you can categorize that particular lens falls under which category, it is a wide angle single focal length or normal single focal length. And the third type is the special purpose lenses, special purpose lenses. These special purpose lenses are meant for specific purposes. They are classified as fish eye and we have seen the macro lens which is used for the close up picture and perspective controls. These are the three special lens purpose lenses that I have showing it to you. There are even many special purpose lenses are there. The two mostly used special purpose lenses are fish eye, fish eye, macro and perspective control lenses. So, as the name suggested fish eye lens will give a high distortion to the subject. As we discussed in the uh, biconcave lenses, you know, the biconcave lenses gives the distorted picture, which is even in the what you say angle focal length. Fish eye lens will give you a high distortion to the subject, as like in the wide angle, the curved edges. So, macro lenses are used to focus on objects that are small and needs detailing and the perspective control. It is a special purpose lens, use it to minimize this distortion to subject by changing it tilt angle. So, the one of the additional feature in this uh, perspective control lens is where even if you go closer we can adjust uh, to avoid this distortion the camera lens can be tilted. You have to be very clear here we are not tilting the camera, camera will be in the plane of the image or image plane as you have seen parallel to the image plane the camera will not change just keeping the camera fixed and just only tilting the lens. Lens can be tilted as you can see in the picture the perspective control camera which has a control of uh, tilting the lenses. So, perspective control allows user to minimize distortion to subject to changing it tilt angle. So, these lenses are also of a non variable focal length it is a fixed focal length. So, these are all the mostly used uh, special purpose lenses. Fish eye which gives more distortion, macro is to take a normal picture for the close up pictures, perspective control can be used to minimize the distortion to get a by using its tilt angle. I hope now you are clear with the different types of lenses used in photography to put it very simple at any lens can be fall under three categories.
zoom focal length, single focal length and special purpose lenses. If it is special purpose lenses, just see which type fisheye or macro or perspective control. Leave as I said before, the mostly used types of lenses are zoom focal length and fixed focal length lenses. Under that, okay. And now I am going back to the first picture to summarize today's class, okay. So C, zoom, wide angle zoom and normal zoom. Even in single focal length, wide angle, normal and zoom, okay. This will help you to summarize the lens type, extreme wide angle, wide angle, normal, medium telephoto, telephoto and super telephoto. See the range, specific range of the lens type started from the less than 20 millimeter to the super telephoto greater than 300 millimeter. These two things will decide the type of photography or you decide which type of photograph you want to take then select your lens type and go for the specific focal length or if you take just take a camera lens and read what is that thing and you can easily categorize that particular lens under any of these category okay that's it hope you, it is clear for the different types of lens and its ranges and uh, we have discussed the, uh, each uh, what you say the features uh, of each and every type of lenses and its disadvantages this will help you to decide your choice of lens for your photography thank you happy learning